Okay, so in this video, we're going to finish up by um, having Sammy be able to look at the the books on the um, on the table over here and have him respond to them. Just basically setting up a, a what's called a hotspot in the room. The way that you do that is that's um, that those are called hotspots. So I'm going to select hotspots from the drop down list. By default, there are no hotspots in the room, but we want to create a hotspot out of this um, out of this set of books. So the way that we do that is we just simply draw an object, a, a, a region around this set of books. And again, you probably, the best way to do this is to, to go into an editor, turn on layers, you know, draw draw your uh, your hotspots. And I never said how to, what to do at that point after you've drawn, after you've drawn your, um, your regions in another uh, editor. What you, what you would do after, at that point, uh, the way you would do that is you would just click on the um, import, I believe it's this one here, import mask from file so if you click on that uh, it'll it'll bring up a dialog box you can select a, um, a file that contains your it's called a mask but basically it would be just the areas the the areas that are co colored of the the regions that you want and then you could just import that directly into the editor and it would just kind of put that on top of your screen here um, but but we'll just do what what we're doing from from AGS as editor because we're not trying to be too precise and too too detailed here so um, what we want to do is we want to create a hotspot around the books, um, and it's up to you how how closely you outline the books. You know, I could be very precise and outline exact every pixel around the books, but I don't really want to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, it would take a while, but number two, if I just kind of have a loose outline like I'm doing here, and let me fill that in, what that that avoids to a certain extent what, what what they call pixel hunting in these kind of games where you have to click on exactly the right area to get to get the desired effect in the game I mean you know if if the character clicks over in this general area in fact we may, we may even want to expand the general area a little bit farther whereas if the player click clicks anywhere within this you know general area we might want to to assume that they were clicking on the books and not make them click on you know each you know, exactly precisely the the set of books um, bounding rectangle or whatever what have you so so in this case even if they click outside here or, or over here a little bit where this blue area is it'll still get the books the the reaction that we want from the books so we have this area here now we want to assign again an event to this area just like we did with the rooms well we have the hotspot ID one uh, and you can see that there's many many more hotspots you can have in the room uh, in this particular uh, room there's actually 50 of them you can have in any particular room um, so we go over to events on that hotspot and now we can see I'm going to expand this out a little bit so we can see what these say any click on hotspot so this this event will happen obviously on any any click no matter what what mode the cursor is in or you can do it individual modes like interact look at if the mouse moves over the hotspot maybe you want something to happen uh, if you want if you try to pick up the hotspot if you stand on the hotspot talk to the hotspot um, Use an inventory on the hotspot, and this this will this will you have to put in the code as far as which inventory item you used. Um, would it would react differently depending on which inventory item you used, and then a user mode one, user mode two. Uh, AGS allows different uh, two user modes, custom user modes. For example, maybe you want to have a smell icon on your mouse, or maybe you want to have a taste, kind of like the the Space Quest uh, games from Sierra did. So you could you know you could do those for using these user mode one and user mode two. But what we want to do is we want to event to a fire uh, an event to fire when he looks at the hotspot. So we click on the ellipses just like before, and now this has taken us back to our room editor, and it's added a hotspot one look. Um, I should have named this hotspot before I uh, before I did that. Uh, in fact, let me let me do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna delete out. It's gonna erase this function that it created here because I want that just I don't want that to say hotspot one. I want that to say books. <laughs> And I meant to um, to name that, so I'm just going to delete these this stuff that it did for me. And before I before I create on the event this time, I'm going to say I'm going to call this H books, H standing for hotspot, and then books. Now the description, I'm just going to say books. You know, you could say books on shelf or what have you, what, whatever's the easiest way for you to, to to look at that. Now I'm going to go over to the events. I'm going to say if you look at the event. And now this says H books look. So this is just a little bit more descriptive in the function name that it creates. So now when you look at the books, let's have Sammy um, dot say again and say um, I believe in Sammy's quest he said something about there looks like there's a, rat, a book a book on rat recipes there. So um, 
it looks like there's a book on rat recipes there. Let's just have him say that. And again, you just end with a, a close parentheses and semicolon, excuse me, just like we did before. And just to make sure it works, let's compile and run the game. Okay, so if I click on the look icon and click on the books, he says, looks like there's a recipe on rat recipes there. So that's good, that's what we want. And notice if we click on anything else, if we click the hand, interact on there, it doesn't do anything, look, uh, I'm sorry, talk doesn't do anything. Um, of course, walk will do something. But none of the other things do anything because we haven't created custom events for those particular things. Well, let's have it do one more thing. Let's say that um, if Sammy looks at it, not only does he say something, but let's just say he walks over to that area. Um, so what we want to do is say see Sammy dot walk and now we give it we, it wants several um, parameters now it wants an X and a Y location where do we want Sammy to walk to well we have to kind of figure that out if we kind of drag our mouse around and kind of say we want him to walk where his feet where his feet are where my mouse cursor are so about right here and we look at the top here where the mouse position is and that's about position 55 comma 127 X is 55, Y is 127. So we can go back into here and say 55 for X and 127 for Y. Now this is saying block or no block. That's what it wants for this next parameter. Block means that nothing else in the game can happen. Basically it gives us an hourglass um, uh, uh, mouse cursor and all scripting halts at that point. So the, um, the script sort of waits for him to get to that point before it continues. Or if we select no block, it's kind of like he's walking in the background and the user can still do other things while he's walking. In this case, we want it to block. We, want, we, don't, want, we don't want him to say the, in other words, we don't want this next line to happen until he gets to this spot. And now, do you want him to walk anywhere or do you want him, only to, do you want him to obey the walkable areas? Well, we want him to obey the walkable areas here. So we don't want him to walk on the walls to get there. And so that's really all you have to do. So now Sammy's gonna walk there. And, the, and the, the script is going to halt right here because of this block. It's going to halt right here until Sammy gets to 55, 127. And then at that point, he's going to say, it looks like there's a, recipe on, uh, a book on rat recipes here. So let's, let's see how that works. So if I click on look, it should all happen. So now he's walking over there. Notice I have a, a, an hourglass cursor. And then he says, looks like there's a recipe on rat, there's a book on rat recipes here. Um, I don't know how he knows that because he's shorter than the table is. Uh, I guess he's looking up at him. Boy, Sammy is awful short. I didn't. I guess I've never noticed that before. Um, so anyway, so that's that's how you would do that kind of thing. And then you could define a a, a region for or a hotspot. I'm sorry for for the vase. You might want to define a, a hotspot for the table. Um, in the game, we had all kind of them. We had one for the banister. We had one for the stairs. We had one for each one of these pictures on the wall. And in all these were hotspots. We had one for the the hook on the wall here, um, for the walls, for the floor, for the trap door. Um, and each one of those things then would, would behave differently. Um, you know, when you look at the, the pictures, you might want him to say, I think he said something about those are my relatives uh, on, hanging on the wall. So, um, you know, you can obviously do a customized uh, action for every single uh, thing in the room. So that's really what I wanted to cover um, in this video. Oh, and I do want to mention one more thing. Uh, in Sammy's Quest, we have... Basically, the narrator is Sammy, and what I mean by that is whenever you click on something and look at something, Sammy is the one that tells you about that object, so Sammy is talking to you. But let's just say you wanted it to be traditional like uh, like traditional Sierra games. Typically, the character didn't respond to you. You had sort of a, a narrator, an unseen narrator that, that, that responded to you when, you when you looked at certain things in the game, um, and it wasn't the main character. So let's just say we, say we wanted to have that type of game uh, instead of having the character interact with you. So... I'm going to comment out this line by just putting two slashes in it. So now Sammy's not going to say anything anymore. And I'm going to drop down to the next line. And then you have a function called display. And what that will do is that will display a, uh, a message. So you can say display. And then I'm going to say there is a recipe on rat recipes. Why do I keep doing that? There is a book on rat recipes here. In that case, we also, in, since the since the narrator is saying it, we don't really need Sammy to walk over there at that point. So I'll comment out that line too. Basically, if I comment out the line by putting two slashes in front of it, that just turns that into a comment. The parser ignores it. 
So when I run the game now, and I click on look over here, now instead of Sammy saying it, it's a sort of a message that gets displayed in the middle of the screen saying there's a book on rat recipes here. And then we can click to get rid of that recipe that that um that message. So just really quickly, that's how you that's how you would do that if you didn't want Sammy to interact with you all the time. Alright, well I'll see you in the next video. I'm about out of time on this one.